land acquisition. In today's lesson, we're going to be talking about the land that was acquired by the United States during the time period of about 100 years. So let's go ahead and get started. Today's guiding question is, what new territories became part of the United States between 1801 and 1861. So I guess I misspoke there, not 100 years, but about 50 years, a little over 50 years. And how did the new territories become part of our country? We're going to be exploring that as well. Today we are going to learn how our country grew in size. How did we go from the original 13 colonies to what America looks like in the contiguous United States today? The first purchase of land is called the Louisiana Purchase. You're familiar with this. It happened in 1803 when Thomas Jefferson was pres president of the United States. It was acquired from France by Napoleon Bonaparte, and it was purchased from Napoleon for about $15 million. The advantage to the United States was that it doubled the size of our country as far as land. Some other information that you should be familiar with is that Lewis and Clark were the explorers whom Jefferson hired to explore the newly purchased land. Where is the Louisiana Purchase on this map? Did you say E? If so, you are correct. Two, Florida. How did Florida become part of the United States? Well. The United States wanted control of Florida, and Spain's attempt to bring settlers to Florida had failed, and by 1800, Spain's control of Florida had weakened. Gaining control of Florida for the United States would mean gaining control of the Mississippi River and better access to the Gulf of Mexico and the Atlantic coast. That was an important route for trade, and the United States really wanted to gain control of that. Finally, in 1821, the United States was successful in purchasing Florida from Spain. Florida became a territory of the United States. So if you're copying the notes, you're probably wondering, so what's with Andrew Jackson capturing Florida? Well, it had to do with something called the Seminole Wars. The Seminole Indians were the Native Americans indigenous to Florida, and they fought to keep the land from the United States in a series of wars. The first Seminole War took place when Andrew Jackson and 3,000 soldiers invaded northern Florida in 1817. Yes, Jackson did not have permission from the United States government, but the military moved to capture much of East Florida, and this ended up benefiting the United States greatly. And as you can see from the dates that the United States gains control of Florida two years later. Where is Florida on the map? Did you say G? You are correct. Three, Texas. So Texas was a part of Mexico when Mexico gained its independence from Spain in 1821. Four years later, an American named Sam Austin, there he is right there, established a colony in Texas. About 300 families came with him and settled the land. Now the Mexican government gave approval for them to settle, and as the colony grew in population and farmlands owned by the settlers, disagreements started to come up between the colonists living in Texas and the Mexican government. These disagreements eventually led to violence, and the Battle of Gonzales in 1835 was when Texas settlers and Mexicans began fighting. This started the Texas Revolution, where the Texans fought to gain their own independence from Mexico. At the famous Battle of the Alamo in 1836, only about 200 Texans defended the Alamo for 13 days against 4,000 Mexican soldiers. Even though they fought bravely and had the courageous Davy Crockett alongside of them, all the Texans were killed. This was, the o this was only one battle, though, and the defeat did not stop the rest of Texas. A few weeks later, Texans declared their independence, formed their own country, and Sam Houston, there he is right there, led a group of Texans to defeat the Mexican army at the Battle of San Jacinto. For a few years, Texas was an independent country. That's right. That's why it's called the Lone Star State, separate from the United States. However, 
te uh, Mexico was always a very real threat to Texan settlers living there. And over time, Sam Houston convinced other leaders in Texas to join the United States as an official state because the U.S. would provide needed protection with its army if Mexico was ever to attack again. In 1845, when they were admitted, Polk was the president of the United States. Where is Texas on the map? Hope you said D. Number four, Oregon Territory. Oregon was the land that had been explored initially by Lewis and Clark on their expedition for Jefferson and it remained a wilderness area for about 30 years after. Then in the 1840s, settlers started coming in covered wagons from the east using the Oregon Trail. Now this trail was about 2,000 miles long and went through six different states. The pioneers who used this trail to travel west would load up their Conestoga wagons with everything they owned and go west in groups called wagon trains. The trail was dangerous, included sometimes bad weather, wagon accidents, unfriendly Native Americans, disease, starvation, and wild animals. It was tough. These pioneers had to have guts to do what they did. There was a lot of risk involved, and some of them died. Thousands of people migrated west, and many of them settled in Oregon. Oregon Territory included not only what we now call Oregon, but also Washington State, Idaho, and parts of Montana and Wyoming. Technically, Oregon Territory was a region that Great Britain controlled, but through a treaty with the British, the United States gained control of the territory in 1846. Official statehood came about 10 years later in 1859, while Buchanan was president. And where is the Oregon Territory? Hope you said A. Five, Mexican Session. So when Texas officially became part of the United States, Mexico did not like that now the United States had control of it. There was a lot of arguing about the border of Texas. Mexico claimed the border was one river, while Texas and the United States claimed another river. The president at the time was James K. Polk, and he sent troops to Texas to protect the border. The American general in charge was a man by the name of Zachary Taylor. In response, Mexico sent their troops, led by General Santa Ana, and at the Battle of Buena Vista, Taylor, along with his 5,000 men, were attacked by a massive army of 14,000 soldiers. There's Zachary Taylor right there. Um, they were seriously outnumbered, as you can tell. Surprisingly, the Americans held them off, and President Polk, this is an interesting story. President Polk and General Taylor did not get along. Polk was worried, actually, that Taylor was becoming too famous and popular, and with that power might be a threat to him and replace him as president in re-election. So long story short, instead of sending reinforcements to Taylor and his troops to capture Mexico City, Polk sent another army led by another general to do it. The Mexicans agreed to a peace treaty once the U.S. had gained military control of their capital city and had divided up much of their country, and an official border was agreed upon, and Mexico offered to sell a large area of land to the United States for $15 million. That included parts of California, Nevada, Utah, and Arizona. Talk about a great deal. So where is the Mexico session? I hope you said B. You would be correct. All right, let's talk about the Gadsden Purchase. This is your last purchase that we're going to be talking about. When? 1853. Acquired from Mexico. How? Bought for $10 million. Advantage to the U.S. Could build a railroad. Other information? It cost almost as much as the Louisiana Purchase for only 3% of how much land. So in 1853, Millard Fillmore was the President of the United States. The West was becoming settled by pioneers at a rapid rate, and one way that the, the United States could make the West more accessible was to build a transcontinental railroad. That meant a railroad that would take travelers from the cities in the East, like Boston and Philadelphia, and take them totally across the entire continent to California and Oregon. The railroad companies had predicted that the railroads from the east and west would converge or meet up somewhere in this area at the bottom of what is today Arizona and New Mexico. 
The Gadsden Purchase refers to the acquisition of land about 30,000 square miles, which was bought by the United States from Mexico for about $10 million. Now remember, back in 1804, when Jefferson had bought 828,000 square miles from France, what had that cost? Only $15 million. And now Fillmore is willing to pay almost that much for only 30000 Crazy. But they were going to do it to increase travel and trade, which they believed would be a worthwhile investment. Here's the even crazier part. They never built a railroad through this land. They do build a transcontinental railroad in 1869, but the two railroads connect way up in Utah, not even close to the land bought in the Gadsden Purchase. Where is the Gadsden Purchase today? Whoops. I should not have circled B. I should have circled C. That's the Gadsden Purchase. Here's an overview of kind of what we covered today. The Northwest Ordinance we'll cover in another lesson. And if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more flipped classroom lessons on American history.